Good morning guys, this is Matt Powers. We have a real quick one this morning. I wanted to address the, the swale controversy that you guys see playing out all over the internet right now. Uh, let me just shift this like this, it's easier for me to, whoa! I'm into the ground now. All right, Whew. this chair just went into the ground. So, there's like, you know, all this controversy over swales right now on the internet. Everyone's arguing, debating, the, it's not real, it's real, it's not real. Well, let's get some more complexity there, guys. Let's discuss, you know, other earthworks and what the other side may be talking about because uh, there's a lot of richness in exploring both. So I want to show you this section. I want to do a reading from one of my books. So let's, l l let's flip this around to what I'm talking about. So I've got these, uh, this like really small section of my book right here uh, where I just introduced, you know, holistic management and decision making, formula holistic goal, and then the framework of holistic management right there. So like define the whole observe and document. It's all, you know, Alan Savory stuff, you know, principles of holistic management over there on the other side. Then I have, you know, key line scale of permanence, the agrarian's platform. These are all different frameworks that we use when we design. And then here's what I wanted to read to you guys today. This is the key line patterning and design section. So this takes you through all the different forms, the main ridge line, primary valley, right? Takes you to the whole primary land unit um, and all the different features. It's a quote up top there from Alan Yeoman that I'll start with. It takes you uh, through Google, a uh, Google map section right here and shows you all the different landforms in reality, right? And then, and this is in reality from Darren Doherty, uh, he sent me the picture. I put it together and sent it back to him and he gave me more advice. He said, you need more lines, you know. And then uh, this right here uh, shows what, you know, valley key line patterning looks like. Uh, we talk about, you know, things like access and, you know, different from just on contour and how it's, you know, pastoral and beyond. It's pretty incredible stuff. So I'll be talking about that, this section right now today. So we'll, we'll start with that. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, maybe I'll switch to over here. Like making holes, I'm like broad forking the, the the garden or the the lawn here with this chair. It just keeps going in. But that's good, you right? That's good. We're aerating. So, and this of course is uh, from the Permaculture Student too. Key line planning is based on the natural topography of the land and its rainfall. It uses the form and shape of the land to determine a farm's total layout. The topography of the land, when viewed in light of key line concepts clearly delineates the logical position of an on farm of on farm dams irrigation areas roads fences and farm buildings it also determines the location of tree belts to provide shade and give wind protection key line concepts also include processes for rapid soil enrichment this the shape of a landscape is produced by the weathering of geological formations over millennia the processes are always the same and so the topography of agricultural land has a basic fundamental consistency. It is the inevitable nature of land shape that river valleys collect water from smaller creek valleys. They, in turn, are fed their water from still smaller valleys until finally the water derives from the very first or primary valleys of the catchment area. In, in any country, anywhere, when rain shapes the land over long periods of time, it inevitably creates and determines the topography of that land. Ultimately, at the extreme variation to consistent topographical shapes, topographical shapes occurs where geological features such as hard rock outcrops modify normal surface weathering. So in other words, all landscapes, you know, they tell a story, right? They're all actually predictable. Uh, erosion all works the same, right? Um, so unless there's unless there's actual rock outcroppings and then they would alter that right because they, they they would weather the same as as soil so the key point remember we were looking at that 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 map the key point this is the point after which the soil change and this is my writing that was a quote from alan yeoman's priority one from 2005 a superb book uh alan yeoman is pa yeoman's son and uh, his work really extends his father's work and it's, it's absolutely incredible. This section of my book is edited by Darren Doherty, Darren J. Doherty, and he grew up on a key line farm. So this is checked out by someone with extreme experience, someone who writes on this stuff exclusively, 
And this leads, you know, this is an introduction to the concepts that he really delves into and gives you, you know, the greater detail on. Ooh, it's bright out. Flying to myself here. All right, so, um, do, 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 do. This is the, all right, the key point. This is the point after which the slope changes from an erosion zone to a deposition zone. So it's eroding, it's the top of the mountain, and then there's this first depression, this first area where it settles and slows. Clay and silt particles settle here in great concentrations as the water slows in its path on top of and through the soil. Key points occur some distance after the land coming down from the ridge has changed from concave to convex, which makes sense, right? Because it starts slowing here. Doesn't mean it settles, right? So it's not quite there, it's a little bit lower. How gentle or steep the slope is determines where the most settling occurs. The slowing of water that leads to the deposition only begins at that concave point. So at some point below that, deposition will begin and concentrate in the landscape. This observation and concept coined by Australian author and farmer P.A. Yeomans are enduring. It is the idea that we can catch, soak, and divert water at these points in the land for better hydrology of the land. These are ideal sites for dams. Seb Holzer is much more free form with his interpretation of these sites. Any depressions or deep zones are areas where clay and silts have been collecting and therefore are ideal pond or water retention sites. So he is more in doing retention. Um, P.A. Yeoman was talking about dams and specifically like ponds. Key line. Key line is, and, and, I, and, I, and I include you know, different perspectives and stuff so it gives you guys a range uh, and an understanding of a uh, broad spectrum. All right, so key line. Uh, key line is a contour line that extends off the key point. That's it, right? So where the deposition really settles in and there you could put something right there, that sweet spot. The contour line off of that itself along that where that, that settlement is happens, okay? And uh, it, it extends. So, you, so you, can, you can catch that, you can extend that water catchment. A swale or a diversion drain can be extended from off the key point at contour, increasing the water catchment of the key point. So here is a swale used in the key line system, and it's not like we're swelling the landscape, it is one swale, right? Very different, same concept, you know, but used totally judiciously, totally different, okay? It's important that we get this sophistication in our understanding, right? Because that's what these debates are all about. People are like, there's no sophistication, right? Um, using swales increases the catchment at both the key point and below the key line. Sealed diversion drains focus the water at the key point. So it depends on your situation and goals, right? Swale paths or roads can be ripped to increase infiltration. Where possible, terraces can uh, terraces can extend off key points. It is important to note that the key line does not extend to the ridge. It is contained in the primary valley between primary ridges extending out from a main ridge. And here's a quote from the great Darren Doherty. The contour of the key point within the primary valley is called the key line. The contour of the key point within the primary valley is called the key point. He, yeah, he's really good at this. That's why he's so concise. His book, uh, The Regrarian's Handbook, uh, first couple chapters are out, the e-handbook the e is out. So check that out, it's really amazing. He's the guy you know, behind the whole Regrarian's movement. All right, so access. So, you know, remember I showed you this? There's an equidistance thing going on here that you can't get if you're on contour. On contour moves all around, right? Think about that. It doesn't go 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. It's not standardized. And for commercial operations, you know, to get those projections for investors, gotta have it standardized. So let's, let's get into that. It, it really extends from this whole like, concept of access being, you know, of primacy. <laughs> All right, so access. A key concept in both the key line scale of permanence and the Regrarian's platform is access, roads or pathways in design. This is because when designing a site, everything is first based off the climate then the geography, and then water. Once you know where the water is, you're going to need to base your system around accessing and using that water. All trees, irrigation, housing, etc., are based off where the roads are placed. Uh, and, proper placed uh, and properly pr placed roads flood, erode, or wash away. But a well-placed road on the center of a ridge is ideal. 
not always possible, but we know, right? Uh, grading is it, it to allow water to leave the road evenly will prevent erosion. This makes for a long-lasting, durable road. Many people know this. Roads along the ridges also allow tree systems to circulate the air and avoid frost pockets. Having access along the ridge means any contour off the ridge allows for easy access and road building. You can bench it. Uh, roads serve as a skeleton for all key line pattern designs with ridge line roads being the spines. Pretty cool, right? It's so simple. This is why this is a seriously powerful thing that we had to include in this. And, and you know, Darren Doherty took the time to, you know, really school me in this so that I wouldn't mess it up. <laughs> Alright, so often we see roads going down uh, the center of valleys and homes lining it. But this is a recipe for a disaster because the valleys are where all the water and everything it carries collects. So different from on contour. Uh, and there, this is the, there's, there's only two more paragraphs, so we're almost done. Different from on contour, while some use swales on contour exclusively on their site with great results, many landscapes generate a lot of swale stubs, inconvenient narrowings or widenings, and dead end paths. This is just a reality. You know? When you're doing a small site on, by hand, it looks great. It's just a little garden in your backyard and it's great for water retention and that's awesome. Swales are like really easy to do by hand with a shovel. Anyone, almost anyone can do them that physically is able and it's, it's easy and fun. Uh, but there, there's more to it, right? Um, if, if you're creating a, creating a commercial system, you don't want swale stubs everywhere. You want a uniform understanding of what is available and when and have it be uh, all right, anyway, all right, here we go. Key line patterning only uses the top or bottom contour of an area to determine the guideline for the rest of the rows, firms, roads, or fences. You guys hear that? It's only on the top or the bottom that a swale could be. It's on contour. It may be a road. It may not be a swale. It may just be uh, a rip that uh, trees are planted on. It really depends on your goals, your site, your climate, your soil. So uh, even here, uh, there's a lot of depends, you know, built in complexity, which is really important that we get everyone uh, accustomed to that and comfortable with that. And so when we have these discussions online, feelings don't get hurt. <laughs> All right. So um, in steep cultivation, uh, in valley systems, start at the top, then move down parallel to the original guideline. See the diagram. In steep cultivation, areas start from the bottom contour and then make rows parallel to the contour guideline uphill at an equidistant spacing. So in other words, valley systems start at the top, make that contour and go down do 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 where it's really, really steep, start at the bottom and go on up. Um, all right, so um, doo -doo -doo. this allows for standardization of access. The road or path is the same width the entire way and whatever equipment is being used can make turns easily at both ends of the rows or roads regardless of, well, no, that is, both isn't there, I, I apologize. Used can make turns easily at the ends of the rows or roads regardless of whether it is a wheelbarrow or a large tractor. Equidistant rows and, class, and the classic grid pattern, it, you know, they are a time-tested system that can use contour as an initial guide but ultimately cannot follow the contours for every line or row. In a commercial setting, standardized rows gives farmers the data necessary to more easily manage their farms, predict their yields, sales, water retention, carbon sequestration, and more. Pastoral and beyond this is the final section. That's actually little birdies over there, if you guys can hear them going. There's a baby birdies right by our window. So key line, uh, all right, pastoral and beyond. While initially designed to help ranchers and farmers with hydrology and farm planning, the key line design method has been applied to forestry. Pastoral ripping is shallow, one to two feet deep, 50 meters, while forest ripping is often one meter. The water catchment from a forest is immense, so ripping has to go deep for a fast penetration of water and easy access for roots to travel downward easily. Key line design, key line patterning, the agrarian's platform, the key line subsoil plow ripping are all incredibly, incredibly powerful concepts to source in design. The agrarian's platform uh, uh, the Riverians platform's addition of socioeconomic aspects to allow for key line thinking to find inroads into many different holistic contexts. Oh, yeah, sorry, I read it wrong. 
The Gregorian's Platform's edition of Socioeconomic allows for aspects, allows for key line thinking to find inroads into many different holistic contexts. For businesses, entrepreneurs, and consultants, the methodol methodological approach, the detailed and advanced mapping, the analytical skills discussed in Darren J. Doherty's Regrarian's Handbook are an inspiration and a solid guide towards better practice. And that's the end of that section. The next section is rewilding in design. So this book has you know, a lot of stuff that uh, people think are separate, uh, but I, 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 I got a lot of those experts to work with me and show uh, me what they're exactly meaning. So when I created this whole spectrum, they were able to uh, guide me so that it integrated properly. Uh, it's really exciting. I hope that elucidated for you some of this confusion that you see on the internet around swales, around key line, you know, terraces, berms, all this stuff. They're like, yes, it must be this. Ah! You know, there's a lot more complexity than that. You might do that, that a little bit of that. You might mix things, might create something new. Have a great day, guys, and I've got to go run and record a podcast.